So IDubs has finally responded to the N-word controversy, the Tanamangu controversy, all the controversy that's happened with them in the last couple of years. Let's actually check out a clip of that video right now. For a while, I felt like if I changed my content over time, that people would see that as a reflection of who I am and what I value. Uh, but I, I'm starting to realize that that is a very weak and passive way to, you know, run my channel and live my life. So I, I think it's, you know, if I'm gonna have the balls to go to Tana's uh, fan meetup and say slurs at her and then make a video about how it's okay to say slurs, I, I think I should have the balls to make an apology video and take accountability for the mistakes I've made. So that's what this video is. I've realized that I need to be crystal clear about what I believe, so there's no room for ambiguity. I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel, and I've also created a culture of uh, apathy and, I don't know, a lot of, like, cruelty as well, like... Now, all of this began a while ago, but this really, really, it's almost like he lit a flame and I really think that happened on this clip right here. I did not like the interactions that I had with fans. There were quite a few human beings that I interacted with that just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked. Some people were very much like antisocial, weird, basement dwellers. You know, the one time a month that they come out of their cave and they run into me, their favorite YouTuber. And what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not going to repeat. <laughs> Today's topic is the topic of empathy. I think everyone needs some form of empathy. To me, I've always said that every person needs to be blunt and respectful. I think those are the two main things that people need. Now, a lot of what Idub said, I really relate to. And I've talked about this before on my other channel. I've talked about this many times. There was a time when I was younger, and this video is gonna be a mixture of me talking about me as you know, as my life and what Idub said, but. In, in my life, when I was younger, when I was 16, 15, 14, as the ages between 14 and 18, I went through this very weird phase of my life. And I think everyone does. Everyone as a teenager goes through a weird phase. I know some people have goth phases. I know some people have some weird phase. But m to me, it was this attempt to be very edgy. And, and the reason why, and I, to give you an example of my edgy jokes, I would say a lot of slurs. I would say some of the most offensive things imagine. My whole goal was always to be offensive because I, I was growing up with people like Filthy Frank, Idubs, the old H3H3, uh, you know, a lot of those channels. And, and I remember back in 2016, the era was people were trying to be as edgy as possible, right? In fact, to, to just give you a somewhat of an example if keemstar the current keemstar we have right now was to go back in time to 2016 he would be seen as a mild you know creator like no one would really even think much about him even maybe entertain maybe something that entertain says i don't know but that was me and then I, it was around and i'm not gonna go much into details but i i had a certain epiphany that happened to me around the time when i was 19 20 and I started learning that I was being an asshole because I had lost friends. I've genuinely lost friends over things I've said. I, there's been times where some of my friends are like, hey, what you're saying is really harsh. And But but to me, it was always, I want to be as offensive as imaginable. And, and, and then eventually I learned that it's not funny if I'm just being an ass. Like to me now, I do make edgy jokes. Like I'll make some jokes like that'll sound more edgy than the average person. But I always make sure that it's always in respect and it's always in a way where everyone around me can laugh. If if no one around me is laughing, then why am I even saying the joke? That's how I always now think about it now. But back then, that wasn't the case. Back then, it was be as offensive as possible. Be as much of an asshole as possible. And that was the thing. And Idubs had that. I grew up watching Idubs. I loved watching his bad unboxings or his content cops that are popular. And Idubs was so popular that he was able to ruin careers. And one of them was for Tana Mangu. Now, when I was younger, I was always like, yeah, Tana Mangu got wrecked. She's dumb. She's stupid. Stupid. And I was like, I don't know, 16 at the time, probably 15, I don't know. But I watched that video like a couple of weeks ago, and all I kept thinking was, what the hell? This guy went to go harass a teenager for saying something dumb online. Guess what? Teenagers are dumb. If you're under the age of 18, you're probably stupid. But that's okay, because you're going to grow up, and you're going to become smarter. You're going to be become more mature. 
you know and and I, I really watched it and I was like, man, this is what Idubs was willing to go for content. And I, and I still like a lot of Idubs' old videos. I don't really watch Idubs nowadays, not because of anything specific. It's just that I kind of like lost touch, if that makes sense. Similar with PewDiePie. I think a lot of people can agree with me on that part. Uh, but I watched it and I was like, dang. And I think that genuinely that China Mongu video changed his life. Because he went to this teenager's the convention. And just said the hard R N word. And the thing is, you you can always be edgy. You can always make offensive humor. I think you can. But there needs to be a level of honor and respect amongst one another. If someone tells you, please don't make this joke about me, then don't do it. I think everyone should be able to laugh at what you're saying. I don't think a joke needs to be specific for one group of person. Now, yes, I do have this thing where I, I, I had this one guy. And this was recent. This was like a year ago or not a year ago, but a couple months ago. And I was friends with him and we were close. We would hang out. But one thing I kept realizing is this guy was so overtly sensitive to the tiniest of jokes that I genuinely just couldn't even hang out with him because he got so lame and, and, and just ruined the vibe that I just stopped hanging out with him. But at the same time, you do need to have that balance where you have to understand that sometimes you need empathy. And I do have empathy for that guy. It's just that he ruined the vibe for me. He's just no fun, right? And I think that's something that a lot of younger guys need to learn. And I think that's something that, and that's something we need to talk about. The internet is ran by teenagers. It is. I'm, I'm not joking. I lose brain cells watching an Optimus video or going on Twitter because it's always like, blue hair teenage girls named like Emily but it's also like freaking teenage boys who hate feminism who are still in high school talking about the woke mob or uh you're not I'm gonna say the n-word because that's funny and that still happens now I see it happen and the internet is ran by these edgy fucks because any adult would look at idubs and think yeah you just grew up because you eventually grow up you can be you can be funny. You can be edgy because I do think a lot of Idub's video is kind of cringy. I think he comes off as a little bit virtue signaling in, in parts of the video, but still the overall message: people need to gain some empathy. People need respect for one another. You can still be funny, but you got to have some level of respect. And I think that because a lot of teenagers are are controlling YouTube, because that is YouTube is basically controlled by teenagers. Because I guarantee you, a lot of y'all that are watching y'all are probably still in high school, and that's all right. Cool. Let's talk. Let's have conversations. I want to be like a big brother to y'all. The issue is a lot of teenagers see this and think, oh, Idebs is a cock. He's a simp because this one girl changed him. While I do believe women can change you. This really doesn't seem like that because she was there before. She was there during the Tana videos, the, the rice gum video. She was there. What happened was both of them are now in their 30s. And life changes. Life does change you. And when you leave the YouTube bubble, when you leave the, the internet bubble, your life changes because you realize the things that matter on YouTube or Twitter do not matter outside in the real world. And that's something that, that a lot of younger men and women need to understand. The internet is not the perspective of the world. It is just this little bubble that occasionally will pop up, you know, when BLM and, and all, you know, uh, the Me Too movement, and all those, those did eventually go to the real world. But usually it's just this bubble. And most of that bubble is filled with teenagers. It's like, you know, teenagers, they have time, you know, their parents buy them a phone or whatever. And this becomes their bubble. And then the adults that try to make careers out of it or try or they also love using the Internet, or whatever. Keemstar is the best example. He put out this dumbass tweet. I'm sorry, but. Keemstar needs to get out of online. I, That guy's been online way too much. I think he's honestly gone now. He needs to be sent to some type of mental asylum. But but this has basically controlled people in their lives. Because they think that everything on this is facts and how the world works. It's not. People change. People ch uh, change for the better or for the worse. With iDubs, it's just clear. He just gained empathy and respect. When I watch a lot of those old videos of, of iDubs... He genuinely was able to end people's careers, livelihoods. Leafy, again, I don't think has recovered. 
Tana Mongo, while obviously her life didn't get ruined, but, you know, still, she's a teenager and she got harassed on the internet and in person by this guy. Keemstar. I mean, this one was probably, this one was good. Like, I do think some of the Contra Cops were good, but like Keemstar writes them, but the, the Keemstar one, before that, uh, that before that, Keemstar was seen as like the king of the internet. That Keemstar was at the top, but that content cop dropped, and all of a sudden the perspective on Keemstar completely changed. It became now he's the villain, and now he's still regarded as the villain. He kind of felt like LeBron James in 2011 when he was in the Miami Heat. That's kind of what Keemstar used to be back in the day, and I don't think a lot of people really comprehend that because I think the in- the internet is still controlled by a bunch of teenagers. And, and I think that's something a lot we need to start teaching. We need to start teaching that, hey, you're going to change over, over time. It's not just your body, but it's also your mindset, your mentality. And I do think that that also happens when you're older, you gain more empathy. And I know that by perspective because I look back at the things I used to do pre-2019. I was just a shithead. I was an asshole. And I have genuinely lost true friends because I, because my mind was so rock solid on wanting to be edgy and offensive. That I ended up losing people around me because I was too much of a dickhead to actually look up and realize that we are all human beings who live in this same world. You know, not everyone's going to get along in harmony, but hey, we have to do our best to be together. At least try doing something, make a life for ourselves. And I hate how people will use like clips of how I dubs, you can see like more bags in his eyes and his hair is messier. He's older. Of course, he's going to look different. This happened years ago. And look, iDevs isn't perfect. We're not perfect people, but what we can do is strive to be perfect and be better every every day. And I th- and I really think that the hate that iDevs has gone is ridiculous. Yes, I did make a video criticizing iDevs, uh, and I still criticize him for, you know, how he handled the Sam Hyde situation. I think that he went in there trying to make this manipulative documentary, trying to expose him. And I can't blame Sam Hyde for being angry and saying the things he said. I still, I will say that it, I think Idubs and Sam Hyde should just kind of separate themselves and just stay away from one another. But, you know, th- that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But no, I really respect Idubs for being vulnerable, for saying what he said. I think, honestly, it takes a real man to admit when they're wrong. And I give a major W, major W to Idubs. You know, I know a lot of my younger men out there, they're going to listen to this and think, oh, I uh, not Idubs, but uh, Isaac, you're, you're soft. You don't. You, you you don't love edgy j- jokes or whatever. I don't know what the narrative is going to be, but the reality is you need to gain empathy. It will really help you in life. It will really help the people around you. The harassment that Anissa has gone is stupid. It's beyond stupid. The harassment that Idubs has gone is beyond stupid. A lot of it is so stupid. And I think it just shows you that the internet as a culture is literally just teenagers. And teenagers have shifted the minds of adults, including Keemstar. And I think it's gone ridiculous. And I think people need to start talking about it. And it's not just the Emilys with, with rainbow hair or whatever, putting BLM and all cops are bad in their bio. It's not just that. It's also younger guys who are trying to be as edgy as possible, thinking that saying slurs is funny. No, come on, guys. Let's all let's I look while I think maturity is for weenies. I think there are certain aspects in your life that you need to be mature in. And one of them is empathy and showing others some form of sympathy, you know, and I, I don't know, but I, I can go on and on about this topic. But honestly, a lot of what I did said really hits me to my heart because a lot of it I really relate to. And I gen- that is genuinely has affected me. And I, and I will do like a story time video one day really going into it all. But trust me when I tell y'all, you know, like offensive jokes are funny but like it, there's there needs to be that limit and, and if you don't know that limit you're just going to lose people you love around you you know and i've had that and, and i know i'm sounding vague but like really i'm trying like i'm not just saying this because because i i want to suck up to items no i'm saying this because this is something i've genuinely had to deal with like i'm telling you this right now there's no you i was edgy as fuck man like i was like the edgiest of the edgy i was making a holocaust and 9 11 jokes every day i was saying some of the most harsh cruel things imaginable like man and i'm still edgy but i but i now know a, a limit there needs to be a limit to it all but 
that's all I have to say. Maybe I got to do a part two on this video. Maybe go into details as to every, why I really support iDubs in this. But anyways, look, if you like iDubs, keep watching them. If you don't, you don't. I think a lot of y'all need to grow up. Uh, you know, I think people need growing up. Keemstar, obviously, is the obvious one. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed it. See y'all in the next one. Ciao. Yeah, we broke and we know it. We don't act like all these other rappers acting like they got racks. Borrow cars, but we whipping in my mom's truck. 99 full, but act like it's a double R. Yeah, we broke and we know it. We don't act like all these other rappers acting like they got racks. Borrow cars, but we whipping in my mom's truck. 99 full, but act like it's a